<laughs> now, the uh, choice for voters in Northern Ireland looks different to the rest of the UK. One of the big parties feeling candidates there. The SDLP has been around for a long time and it's launched its campaign in Belfast today. A series of SDLP candidates addressed the press conference where the key message was one of prosperity, not austerity. Uh, the party is calling for this to be taken seriously as the peace process. SDP, uh, SDLP MPs will take a progressive stand on key issues at Westminster and want greater economic powers and control over energy policy for Northern Ireland. The SDLP also reaffirmed their commitment, long-standing commitment, to a united Ireland. Uh, we're joined now by Fergal McKinney from the party. He's in Belfast to tell us more. Welcome to the programme, Fergal McKinney. Uh, tell much. me, what, what would you do to cut the £90 billion deficit we face? Well, uh, the starting point for the SDLP in this election is getting people to acknowledge the fact that uh, Northern Ireland is effectively unsustainable going forward. We've got a public sector which is something in the order of 66% of our GDP mm. and a private sector that is just over 30%. And it's weakened and will not be able to support uh, the economy going forward. So we need to transform our economy and we need all of the parties here in Northern Ireland to agree that that is the objective. Uh, we need the two governments to involve themselves in that too. After all, the national government is committed itself to £200 billion of uh, uh, subsidy to Northern Ireland over, over the next uh, 20 years or so uh, without any guarantees that that money will transform the economy in the way that I've just described. Well, that's now, how would that, it's a very interesting proposition because people often talk about the size of the public sector in, uh, in the Northern Ireland economy. You know, I think you clearly want a bigger private sector then. How, how would you go about the, the, well, getting the private sector a bigger share of Northern Ireland's GDP? It won't happen organically. It can't have it organically. What we need to do is have all the parties and the two governments. After all, when we were saying that power sharing was the way forward, and that was the unique SDLP voice at that time, people didn't listen. Mm. But in fact, it has turned out to be the way forward. The problem is that Westminster, if you like, applied a, almost a fire and forget policy in relation to devolution. And now, uh, with the Tories in, in power, they're cutting our block grant all the time, while our private sector is not yet strong enough. So we need a commitment from whoever's in power, uh, along with the parties here, to say we're going to do something entirely different, to transform that economy. So first and foremost, the first word on the page uh, of, on all parts has got to be ambition. We've got to sit down and scope out the scale of that ambition and then start to bolt in, if you like, uh, the aspects of uh, finance uh, uh, that will apply to that. But the type of things that we'd like to see, for example, are infrastructural development. You know, you've got a huge ESS2 project uh, connecting north and south of England. We don't even have a motorway connecting our two major cities. And we don't have a major thoroughfare on the uh, west coast connecting Derry with uh, Dublin. We haven't got a technological university to provide for the types of jobs that we would envisage coming forward in the future in terms of how that economy and that private sector... Of course, sector all that would mean more public spending, wouldn't it? You yes. would probably increase yes, the share of uh, public sector GDP. Yes. But what, you're, but, but what I said was over a longer period of time, uh, the government is actually investing that money with no preordained outcome. Let's agree a plan and let's use the public sector money. And even if it takes a bit more at the start, let's start that with a view to reducing it more dramatically uh, as time goes forward. Can I and ask build you? That and build that private sector. Right. Can, can to, I just to take sorry to interrupt I mean, because we haven't got much time, but I'm just interested. Can you detect the beginnings of a consensus on the centre-left and the centre-right in Northern Ireland for the sort of thing you're saying? The SDLP leads in these type of debates. Other people will come dragging, kicking and screaming to this debate. Okay. We're starting it today. If you want a consensus, We're, you may have to be a bit more magnanimous on Well, that. perhaps, but I'll give you an example. I'll give, I'll give you an example of, of, of... But, I mean, I don't know if there's a word to describe excitement within Treasury officialdom. But I think this type of thing should uh, excite the Treasury because they can see within it the potential for investment to save in the longer term. And remember, uh, and, and this is, I think, where parties will come on board. We're not asking for a deal. We're offering one. All right. Can I just final question. It's very interesting what, what you've been uh, saying. Uh, I assume that in general terms, I, ask, I, I put it no higher than that, SDLP MPs 
will side with a minority Labour government. They would help a minority Labour well, government get those bits of its programme through of which you approve. Well, well I'll put it like this. We've just, I've just sketched out to you what we see as the future. And I know that uh, uh, Ivan Lewis and Vernon Coker before him are intimately aware of the issues that are at, at the heart of our problem. Uh, and that they include the fact that six or more of our local government districts top the entire UK in terms of deprivation and long-term unemployment. And that if we give people, and of course investment of money might help, for example, in terms of the health service in that regard. Okay. But I'll tell you what will help even more. A job. All right. We'll leave it on, on, on that, a simple proposition. Falco McKinney, thank you for joining us from Belfast. Thank you. Now, they've been sliding in the polls in recent weeks, but 